Oh my goodness. Had some fun here on a, uh, on a Monday, uh, you're traveling this week. So where are you going to do the show from tomorrow? LA tomorrow. Um, Colorado Springs Wednesday and Nashville Thursday. Wow. That's a lot of, uh, that's a lot of movement over three days. I'm telling you, I'm gonna, yeah, my, my, my ankles are going to be swollen. My knees are going to be sore. I just still have that little, uh, carry on that you drive around on top of in the I, uh, airports. I sure do. I'm charging it right now. <laughs> the ride bot, <laughs> the ride bot. I can't take it on this trip. Cause it's too long. I have to have like, it's for, it's for three days. When I do the overnight quick ones, I can do it. But three days I need, you know, Oh, you're going to pack a bag. Well, I'm still going to carry on. I haven't checked a bag hawk in a decade. I'm not checking no damn bags. I told well, you, What are you going to do? You're going to bring on a regular-sized piece of luggage? No, I'm going to pack everything in the little one and put it in my book bag. I got a, I got like a big, one of them big traveler book bags that hang down to your knees so I can buck the system and not check anything. Yeah, I'm not a fan of that. I don't, I don't, I don't like the people that do that. I'm not a fan of checking something and sitting at this little metal belt staring with all the other crazies. No, Jack, I'm gone. I'm in the Uber. I'm a holla at y'all. How about you? Follow the rules like the rest of us. Follow the rules. My um, personal bag is bigger than my is my carry-on. It's crazy. Ridiculous. They get mad at me. I know. Do like Solana. Uh, upgrade to the uh, first off the plane uh Upgrade. It's my favorite upgrade in the history of air travel. Solana had to cancel that vacation anyway because the Heat were in the NBA Finals. <laughs> but Solana, coming back or going to Mexico, had upgraded to first off the plane, which is <laughs> such a great upgrade. <laughs> but you know what? To this point, let me say I get first class, first seat, and I check a bag. I get off, I, I'm right in front of everybody. I get down to the baggage claim, and then all the rest of the peons meet me down there to wait for this metal belt to start beeping and lighting up. It is annoying because they they mark your bag when you travel first class priority, so they put a priority sticker on it, and so it comes off the plane first, and then it sits in the transport <laughs> waiting for all the, all the, the regular uh, coach passengers luggage to get in there as well and then you sit at the carousel for 20 minutes i travel a lot so i've actually watched that get get the little exit row over the wing you watch them take the bags on that little belt into the little the little travel thing whatever you watch the priority bags go on the bottom and then you watch all the other stuff pile on top of it so am i really a priority y'all aren't doing this right it is uh it is a great upgrade though, right? First off the plane. Because I don't I don't know, you know, some people don't mind. I think Crowder's well. I I hate it. Get me off the plane. That when that thing hits the ground, I want to get off the plane. I marvel at the people that just sit in their seat and they're not stretching their legs and they're not fighting to get off the plane. I there's people, oh, what's the difference? I get off now. I get. I mean, we're all going to wait at the baggage carousel. That's fine. You wait while you're on the plane. Get me off that plane. Hawk, this random number. If I'm in row 18, I don't even put my shoes on until row 20 starts piling off. Ugh. I sit right there, and they tell me, hey, big man, because everybody kind of feels sorry for me because I'm tall. Hey, you right. good? You good, big dog? Yeah, I'm good. You got it. You got it. You got it. You got it. I don't, want any, I don't want any pressure. Hawk, you're a get up as soon as the plane lands guy. Oh yeah, yeah. I hate and you, that. And then, and then you just stand. You just stand in the aisle. Yes, yes. Yeah, I don't like <laughs> why? to be. Well, why? I don't like to be in that chair. I mean, now when the plane lands, obviously you have to wait for the ding. So you, you've come mm-hmm. to a stop at the gate. But oh, uh, I'm first one up, standing. Oh, oh. I and I do calisthenics in the in the middle of the. I I do Jane Fonda stretches. <laughs> I, I do. I go back to my Jane Fonda workout tape stretches. I hate that guy, Solana. <laughs> that is the no joke. I always get the aisle seat. I like the aisle. I like to be able to stretch my leg, Me preferably too. on the left side. I purposely stay in my seat. Everybody else is standing up. Well, why are I you upgrading the first off the plane? Well, then that way I can be the first one off the plane. But if I don't pay for that upgrade, I mean, I'm purposely sitting down to show everybody all these losers who want to stand up the second the plane lands. What like what you're just standing there now. Now all you're doing is you're just rubbing up on the person next to you. Like just stay in your seat. And when it's time for your row, 
to get off the plane, then you can start getting up and grabbing your baggage. But what are you doing? You're just standing there. Yeah. I much prefer to stand. there. After I've sat for three or four hours, I want to stand. It's one of the reasons that I go window, Solana. It's funny you go aisle. I go window because guys like Hawk want to mm-hmm. rub, cr- rub their crotch on me as soon That's as right. we get to the gate. That's mm-hmm. right. It's exactly that, right. Get your crotch off my shoulder, out of my face. Sit down. It's, it's extra- why I get the aisle. I get the aisle because I, I need to stand up immediately. And I get angry at myself if I'm not the first person standing up stretching. <laughs> I need. You're in a race. I, I want. That's right. That's right. You know, it's like the two baseball players who refuse to go to the dugout after the national anthem. And they just kind of stare each other down. Uh-huh. I got to be the first one. Oh, I see someone getting up in front of me. No, sir. I bound up with the uh, energy of uh, a man half my age. <laughs> you know what I do do? Because, you know, if you land and the ding hasn't happened and then you can hear the the flight attendant saying, everybody's still being your seat. Right. Everybody's still getting your seat. And that one Hawkman stands up early. I never stand up early. I hit him. I hit him with the point and the and the angle sit down. Like I hit him with the point at him and tell him, yeah, do the do the do the sit back down, sit back down. Because like coaching, you said, you're I, coaching. You're coaching coach the, him uh, up. the flight yeah. attendants. You, co- you I'm, coach I'm him up. Actually, I'm helping the flight attendants coach the Hawkmans that want to stand up so fast. You know, yeah. we call that in the joint. <laughs> What's that? A bootlegging <laughs> trustee. <laughs> <laughs> You're a flight attendant's trustee. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't nice like boss. I'll slap the hell out y'all's ass. <laughs> Thank you for flying Django Unchained. <laughs> we hope to see you on your next uh, vacation. I'm All right, let's get uh, headlines here for the 4 o'clock hour with Alejandro Solana. They're driven by the new Palmetto Ford Truck Super Center. Why buy your truck at a car store? Palmetto Ford. We know trucks. I want to do flight talk for the next hour. I got to be <laughs> honest. Because, Hawk, I imagine you're also the guy that puts his carry-on like six or seven cubbies ahead of where your actual seat is. Like, you're that guy. You get on the no, plane. No, because I, I like to be able to access it during the flight. So I, I, I frown upon uh, the person who does that. Hey, you have an assigned area on the airplane. Use your, uh, use your overhead baggage for there. Uh, but I want to have access to it during the flight. I'm up and down. You know, I'll, I'll check just to make sure things haven't, uh, haven't overflowed. I want to make sure everything's settled properly in the, uh, in the pressurization. You know, so I'll open up the, uh, I'll open up the, uh, the carry-on. Make sure everything is all right in there. Kind of take stock of everything. Let everybody know I'm very aware. I may walk to the the lavatory every now and then. I'm very aware of what's in this carry on. As you can see, I'm doing a constant surveillance on my uh, my carry on. So don't get any funny ideas. Hawk, you sound like you got a little trustee in you right there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, right, I mm-hmm. don't trustee anyone on that plane. Salada. <laughs> My bag is going in the first open bin no matter where I'm sitting. That's ridiculous, man. Like, you have your assigned seating. You have your overhead uh, baggage area. Like, why why are you doing that? And to me, it goes hand in hand with the get up first guy. They want to get up first, and then now they want to make their way to the overhead baggage area where they put their bag so that now they have an excuse to, like, oh, excuse me. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, my bag. My bag's right here. Can, Can you? Oh. And, like, dude, just. Sit down where you're supposed to sit down. Well, why would you not want to be around your stuff anyway? Like, why do you want your stuff to have a head start? <laughs> like, I want my stuff with me. I don't, it's my, so my that stuff can't move without me. It's I don't so that you can get off the on. plane first. Like, that. that's the whole idea. Yeah. Now you're making your way up to, like, seven rows in front of you so that you can grab your bag and you're off the plane before the people you were sitting down next to are. And it's just, like, the whole process of that, just be a decent human. Sit where you're supposed to sit, put your bag where you're supposed to put your bag, and get off the plane in an orderly fashion. I'm also not down with sitting where you're supposed to sit. I say sit anywhere on the plane. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) if you hit these Southwest planes where you get to the the, 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 the A31, B52 ones, yeah, Jack, you just, it's it's a. I'll tell you, before 9 11, 
it was pretty much anything goes on an airplane. Like you, I mean, there was no such thing as booking the, I, it, did you used to book seats? Yes. In advance? I That's think what, when you got there though, right? Like once you got no. to the airport and you went to go check in. Yeah, that's, you go why, check that's, in. that's why the Southwest approach is so, like I hate it and frontier and all because, yeah, don't just sit wherever. I want A14. I want you know, whatever it is. I don't want right, but I don't. I don't think it was as, it. well, I know it wasn't as regimented as it is now. Like back in the day, I mean, you literally, it was really more akin to traveling on a bus. Like, yeah. well, I, I had this seat, but you sit over there. Okay, no problem. I mean, nowadays it's like you know, you know what I do? I turn I have I get to Rett syndrome. If I walk up to my seat and somebody's in it, I just yell the seat number and over and over at them. <laughs> 16B. Well, uh, my son is right here. 16B. Well, you know, we wanted to sit together. 16B. <laughs> I just continue. You're gonna get out of 16B. Right. Yeah, right. no, Jack. I'm. This is by the rules. You go Rain Man on them. I go straight Rain Man. Sixteen yeah. B and Solana. Something else. You're talking about it. Now I travel a lot too. You know why I put my bag where as soon as I can put it? Because it's going to be some person with with uh with the crutches that want to put their long crutches across a whole section. No. And now I'm going to pile my bag on top you're of the crutches. Joe Kim Noah. And you're going to get mad. Every time I slam my bag on top of somebody's crutches, they say, those are my crutches. And I say, congratulations. And I just keep riding like, and I sit down. There's crutches on every plane. That there's, you're on. There's, there's a cripple next to me 70% of the time I travel. <laughs> I'm not necessarily for certain a person with crutches is, is a cripple. That's I don't even just, believe that you can use the term cripple anymore. That's why crutches are created because the person has been crippled in some way and they need crutches. I'm not, I'm not so certain. That's ridiculous. A, a ridiculous thing by you. You're trying to avoid the person with crutches. Oh, crutches goodness. don't even fit on, on, on over oh. the top. Trust me. I know. Cause I flew, I've flown with crutches 30 <laughs> times in my life. Crutches don't even fit in the overhead compartment. All you got to do is telescope it smaller. You telescope it smaller. <laughs> you don't even that know how crutches the, uh... work. I'm just right. looking at some of the texts here. What about the person who uh, who reorganizes the overhead bins <laughs> like they're playing Tetris? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? There's the person they just, they know, because the, the flight attendant says, uh, sir, we're probably going to have to check that bag. There's just no room. And the person all of a sudden becomes, you know, a professor of uh, <laughs> space and time. And they start rearranging things. And then they take your bag, which you've conveniently placed right over your seat. And they're like, you know what? I think I can move this over to 11C. And, uh, and then I'll be able to fit my bag. In. And I go, well, wait a second. Now I'm seven rows away from my my luggage. That didn't like. I'm gonna vote no on this one. You know, <laughs> I think it's a vote. Just check the bag. Check the bag. <laughs> check the bag. <laughs> she didn't say, "Hey, if you can't figure out a way to get the the bag up there, then we'll have to check." She just said, "We're gonna have to check your bag." And then all of a sudden, you're going to reconfigure the entire... Hey, it's enough already. You got on the plane late. You got a little cutesy at the Chili's Airport bar. And now you got to check your bag. Sorry. No, but you know what? That guy does have a point because some people, they get on the plane early. And there's a proper way to put your bag in the overhead bin. If you have the right carry-on size, you put it vertically standing almost like upwards. Some people just get in there and they just shove it in horizontal. They put it in the middle of the damn compartment and then they close it. Right. I and was here not, first. No, but that's not the way it works. Like there, nope. there's a, a method to how nope. you properly nope. put your bag up top so, so that you leave space for everybody. So Solana, would you ever go and grab somebody's bag at the Chili's or grab somebody's bag in the bathroom or grab somebody's bag at the gate? No, that's not your items. Don't touch my items. I put my items where I wanted my items. Don't touch my bag. Right, but put your item the proper way. Like, there's mm -hmm. a proper way to do it. You walk past somebody in the grocery store, and you look in their basket, and then you decide, oh, I can make this uh, more economical for you, and you just start rearranging their basket. 
No, it's but if the place. person, if if the public worker who's putting my items in a bag isn't properly putting them the right way, like the eggs in one bag by itself, and really just putting things in the way that they're supposed to be put in, I'll intervene and I'll let them know. Hey, hey, no, no, no. The potatoes, give them the tap. Yeah, give them the potato, tap. Potatoes can't go on top of the eggs. I mean, what what are we doing here? All I right. mean, that that's like that's like bagging one hundred and one. But you give them the tap. Of course. Just kind of like I mean, the understood. You're out. I'll take it from you. Oh. Right. You call the pen. Yeah. You take over? Of course. Yeah. Mm-mm. I'm not bagging, but I, I, I'm the reusable bag guy. I bring a big old big old box of green bags, the reusable mm-hmm. ones. So yeah. we're usually on the same page. Oh, yeah, yeah. You bring bags? Oh, I do 40, too. 40, yeah. 40 reusable Publix bags I bring every time I go shopping. Yeah. That's a good move by you. I know. I'm saving the planet. Hulk uh, yeah. doesn't care about us. You libs. I mean, <laughs> what is going on here? I mean, who are you shopping with? Elizabeth Warren? I mean, what are we doing here? Less bags, easier to carry. I'm telling you, the boat is... Carry. You're carrying in a load before you get there. But you carry one bag in, and then now coming out, you get in the house faster. The, mm-hmm. Honestly, I'll be honest with you, Hawk. The saving the planet thing is a bonus on top of why I like the reusable bags. You also, you just you, you look like a responsible shopper, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Like you go in there, you bring all your bags, and now the person who's bagging for you, they know. Like they, if anything, they you know they give you a little fist bump. Like oh okay I got gotcha. you you you've been here you've been around here a couple times yeah. already and it's oh, you're trying to uh, you're trying to <laughs> trying to impress the bagger public that's a good move Solana that is <laughs> now I see why you're going places <laughs> <laughs> try to impress Len once in a while instead of Matilda <laughs> at the uh, at the Win Dixie on eighty seven. <laughs> Somebody text in, uh, Solana, are you the uh, the clap when we land guy? On international flights, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. On a domestic flight. I mean, come on. Atlanta. Yeah. On an international flight, you are you applauding the flight crew and uh, or are you just applauding, hey, we're, we're in uh, another country. This is exciting for all of us. No, I'm applauding the fact that we made it. Gotcha. I mean, we had to cross a body of water to get to Mexico. I, I'm applauding for all of us. We made it. I mean, let, let's go. This is this should be an exciting moment for all of us. A body of water. <laughs> you know about the the Gulf? Like the, the Gulf. four four minutes that it takes you to get across the Gulf. Phew. The Gulf of Mexico, man. That's a body of damn water. What are you talking about? But what about if you fly internationally from Chicago? You you don't you don't you don't cross any bodies of water to get to Mexico. <laughs> You get an ovation if you fly to Spain. An right? ovation? Yes. You fly over the Atlantic Ocean. You make it to uh to Madrid. You gotta get. You gotta give the entire crew a, a round of applause. Absolutely. That's the the clap guy gets on my damn nerves. That's silly. <laughs> get the whole plane to clap sometimes. Never. That's a good feeling. That's a good. Feeling. I let I let the plane dictate whether I'm gonna clap or not. If if they're what? like. Yeah, if there's like six or more people clapping, then I I join in. If not, then I, I just kind of lay low. When the when the six foot three black guy next to you says mm 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 mm, you stop clapping. Then I've stopped claps a hundred well, times. I'll do I'll do like a little you know, slap a little, your leg, uh, slap on the leg, just a couple times. Mm-hmm. Maybe, you know, give the guy mm-hmm. a wink. Mm-hmm. Maybe like a little woo. <laughs> You'll What's stop a clap. Here? You'll stop a clap, Crowder, mm-mm, mm-mm. on the plane. Come on. That's all I say. They stop clapping. I don't know what I'm doing to them, but I will say, mm-mm, mm-mm. Don't be that guy. Come on. 